Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. First of all, this channel is just two weeks old and with two videos, it got 400 subscribers and 11,000 views. This is a shocker to me, to be honest. You know, I'm in crypto since 2017 and I always wanted to do a channel like this that offers real content, not just making uh, predictions out of thin air or flexing my size of portfolio but i was not very confident about my delivery so i didn't take that step earlier but today you proved me wrong by showing that you value content more than anything else the like to dislike ratio on this channel is 98.5 percent which is unbelievable so i will continue making original content using real data and analysis let's get back to today's topic today we are seeing an explosion of node projects right and it is so hard to find out which one is better because there are just so many and there is no common scale on which you can evaluate them right so i thought i'll come up with a simple framework that you can use to assess health of most of the node projects and I call this framework the node smell test framework. So in this smell test, I'm going to cover like five indicators that gives you a feel of how sustainable a project is today and down the road. There is no silver bullet. So make sure you understand where you can use these indicators and where you cannot. So where can you use it? Use it in projects where you have fixed number of tokens per node. That includes uh, Stronglock, Thor nodes, and others. Don't use it in projects where you can have any number of tokens per node. Things like Luberture and other projects. So don't use it there, folks. And number two is projects where there is some Ponzi component, like in Stronglock, like in Thor node. Okay. And don't use it in projects where the revenue is distributed to the node holders, like in Eel nodes. Uh, flux nodes and others let's look into the indicator number one which is the new node percentage it tells us how much percentage of the total nodes are being created every day so why is this important so it gives us a picture of how sustainable the ponzi scheme is at the moment because the number of new nodes is a proxy for the number of tokens coming into the system and total nodes is a proxy for number of tokens going out of the system okay or the rewards paid to the node holders so you can use this indicator to compare two projects and then identify which one is more sustainable at that point okay and one thing to note here is new projects tend to have higher new node percentage than the mature projects for example strong block is more than one year old so it would probably have low new node percentage as compared to the new projects let's look at number two it's revenue share of reward or rsr so what this is is you take the total revenue generated in the system by the total rewards paid to the node holders okay so if there is zero revenue so you get a rsr of zero so if every reward is coming out of the revenue then you're going to have a RSR of 100. See, this represents long-term sustainability of the project, whereas the previous one, which is the new node percentage, represents short-term sustainability. Okay, next, fully diluted market cap, which is a product of the total token supply multiplied by the current price of the token. So what it tells us is how much the market is valuing that project so let's take an example project that's billion dollar market cap today fully diluted okay now you need to ask yourself a question that if the project is not generating any revenue okay it's just paying existing nodes with the new nodes right is it really worth a billion dollars this is my second favorite indicator that i use all the time okay next team trust factor so we are looking at the competency based on the track record and how quickly they deliver the roadmap right 
and the second size how big is the team see you can have teams that are highly competent but then they're just one or two people or on the other side you can have large teams with no prior experience in blockchain space right see we need a mix of these two okay so that's what i look for and this is my most favorite indicator when it comes to evaluating projects not just the node projects but in general any crypto projects for long term investment and the reason why this is my favorite indicator is that see let's admit that most of the node projects today are still experimental so we need teams who can pivot to a new business model when it's required to be more and more sustainable and the last indicator is health metrics so in fact this is a derivative of the indicators we already saw before so there is new node percentage and the revenue share of reward right so since we're talking about projects with some ponzi component in it right we always want the new node percentage to be as high as possible if it is low and the revenue share is also low right you should run away from that project and if the revenue share is you know little bit higher probably that's not too bad but still you know you need to be critical of it see ideally we want projects to be in this space right where the new node percentage is high and also the revenue share is high right so there is constant stream of money flowing into the system so these five indicators make up the smell test folks before we put this into action you know let me deep dive into the new node percentage indicator because it's such an important thing for most node projects okay let's take a hypothetical node project and then run through some example i have a brand new node project with a 1000 total token supply and pretty common tokenomics like 10 tokens needed per node and 1% daily reward rate per node which is pretty common and for the sake of simplicity you know i don't have any liquidity pool no revenue and no claim fee right nothing uh, like that i want to run through some numbers and show how new node percentage informs the sustainability of the project okay so in this spreadsheet i took the tokenomics and simulated an exponential growth for this project So I have a couple of charts to show you but before that let's look at the table here so for every day I have the new nodes and the total nodes which you can also see from the chart here right so the blue indicates new nodes and it's growing consistently and then at some point it would peak right and then stabilize around some number it can very well go down as well but then you know I just wanted to simplify it and the red indicates the total nodes where you can see exponential growth So now the most interesting part is really these three metrics. So the net flow is the total tokens in minus the tokens out, okay? So on day 1 we have 10 tokens coming in and 0.1 tokens going out as rewards. That's about 9.9 net flow. And day 2 we have 20 minus 0.3 that's 19.7. And the net balance is a proxy for treasury. So on day 1 you can see 9.9 tokens going into treasury and you can see more and more tokens being added to the treasury. On day 2 we have 29.6 which is 19.7 plus 9.9 right and then it keeps growing at least for a while. And the new node percentage for day 2 is 200 right we have two new nodes and one existing that's 2 by 1 200% on day 3 we have 2 by 3 which is 66% and you see the new node percent dropping and this is quite common with any ponzi model let's see how this looks on a chart i got here so let's take a closer look at this chart so we have the new node percent in orange and then the net balance in green the new node drops significantly and then it ends up at zero and the net balance keeps growing in the beginning it peaks out and then it drops back to zero so it doesn't look good right but then most of the ponzi models will end up in this way so you may be wondering 
why is that the new node percent drops significantly when in fact there are more and more new nodes coming into the system see it's plain simple the new nodes can never grow enough to sustain the exponential growth in the total nodes that's ponzi 101 also the growth in the new nodes at some point will be close to zero you can see that here at around 3500 nodes around beginning of april and at the same time net balance keeps going down right because there are more tokens you need to pay as rewards than the tokens you get out of all the new nodes and at some point here the project will run out of tokens to pay any kind of rewards see this net balance went up initially because you don't need to pay too many rewards in the beginning but as time goes on you will accumulate more and more baggage and the project needs to pay more and more rewards right that's when you see the curve flattening and then going back to zero so what's the takeaway from this example and how can we use this new node percent indicator so when the new node percent starts approaching to zero which it will in all the ponzi's your project should move out of the ponzi model and rely on the real revenue to survive okay so you need to track this indicator and question the team constantly and in fact you should demand for this indicator to be available in your dashboard so we talked about this new node indicator a lot can this indicator alone predict the project success or failure yes if you are still in the ponzi model mode which is true for many projects but if your project is not dependent on the new nodes meaning it's generating revenue like yield nodes then this indicator doesn't matter okay so when you're assessing the health of a project use all the five indicators in my test framework together to get a complete picture now let's go back to my smell test and apply it on a couple of real projects so the first is strong block so in this slide i have the calculation for the new node percent indicator so strong block has over 300000 nodes as of today and there are 2500 nodes being created every day okay so that gives us about 0.8% as the new node percentage so the next project i want to cover is thor nodes so here we got about 115000 total nodes and 2750 daily new nodes you can also find it from their website so this gives us about 2.4 percent much higher than the strong block number so let's compare these two projects on all the indicators in my framework in this table so i got my health matrix which is a derivative of these two indicators and then the fully diluted market cap and the team trust factor right these are the five indicators we talked about earlier so let's start with the health matrix so in this health matrix strong block would sit somewhere here because the new node percent is low and then the revenue is also low right and for thor nodes the revenue is still low but the new node percent is much higher than strong block so i would place Thor nodes somewhere here in this box and strong nodes somewhere here. Now let's look at the other indicators. For the fully diluted market cap, strong block is about 200 million and Thor nodes is way higher at 1.4 billion, okay, which is seven times more than the strong block's market cap. So strong block is the clear winner here. For the team trust factor, I'll go with strong block again because of their expertise and also because the team is public. So overall, if I have to pick between strong block and Thor, I'll go with strong block. That's it guys. I hope this framework is useful for all of you. Tell me in the comments if you like it or if I'm missing something here. I'll come back with a video on Thor node soon and see you guys.